Hey everybody, we are at the last boot from Framex and I'm next to Plastic Preneur. This is looking like a DIY project that got way out of hands. It's a nice way to say that. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? So um, we're a company from Austria and we basically produce machines for the whole plastic recycling process, starting yeah. from plastic scanning to shredding, to melting it up and putting it into new products. So the way it works is you have to separate the different kind of plastics before you can um, remelt it. Yeah. So we have for that our plastic scanner, which works with ultra near red light. Oh cool, so everything I hold up to that little thing like this is probably going to do something weird. Yes. PP, so it knows it's PP. So it tells nice. you like for example yeah. P or PE. It, um, has saved up uh, 30 different types of plastic. Yeah. And if you are in um, plastic science and you produce your own kind of plastic, you can save it up in the way that every kind of plastic has their own graph. Yeah. And you just scan it like um, five to 10 times and there's an app for it. To get so a can, solid uh, yes, reading. Um, yeah, so it learns even though um, when you already so saved it up and you keep scanning your yeah. type of plastic, it just, um, learns by its way and can get yeah. to know it better and better. So once you know what you're actually working with, what happens then? You yeah. throw so, it in there? Yes, you um, you separate the different kind of plastic yeah. and then we have, for example, our desktop granulator. So this is a, basically a shredder? Yes, it's a shredder. The way it works, this one is small enough, for example, for a lab or for prototyping yeah. um, area. And it has a mill in the inside and you can just throw in some um, Lids on the top. Well, I'm not going to waste all your <laughs> caps. We're going to start with this. So, so shredding. All our machines are um, CE certificated, so you can use it anywhere, also yeah. for schools or any area. So what is going to be the typical speed you get uh, on this machine on shredding in kilograms, let's say? Yes, so that depends on what kind of sieve you have. We have yeah. um, different kind of sieves. Right now it's five millimeters. Yeah. The granulate um, is less than five millimeters because the sieve is the five millimeters. We yeah. also can get um, bigger ones. And depending on the sieve, you have an output of six to eight kilograms per hour. That's we have, quite a lot. We have a big shredder that has a double size of the mill and the hopper is big enough to just throw in like whole feet of the garden um, so if, stool. If you're sick of your uh, new furniture, yes, if you're you buying new furniture, you can break just it apart, shred the old it, one in. and uh, you can with a big one, depending on the sieve, um, shred up to 60 kilograms per 60 hour. 60 kilograms, that's uh, yes. quite a lot. Yeah, so we can also look inside of it. Cool. So you can just easily open it up. Yeah. And we have nine blades. Um, so these are all replaceable by the looks? Yes. And then you have something right here on the side and this is to... That is the sieve. Capture which the... Which you can um, change up so it has the holes and every flake that's too big for the hole just gets uh, um, on top again Slung and around. shred it again yeah, yeah. until it's small enough to yeah. fall down. So this way you have always the small flakes. Yeah. And you can uh, change this one, the sieve. Also, um, it can shred any kind of plastic except for example when you have like it's waste and there was a screw in it, yeah. so the blades can break. So but it's even always carbon filled, glass filled, all that kind of material you can put yes, in there. So it depends on um, the size of it a little bit. And um, I mean, carbon is like still not as good for the blades. So yeah, it's, gro it's not corrosive, it. but it will yeah. wear the teeth. Uh, yeah. yeah, and then you can just close it up again. and keep shredding. So after you have yeah. um, the flakes, you can go on to the injection machine. So this one works in a way that you have the barrel. There are two um, heating panels around it. You fill in the granulate. So this is the stuff we just shredded yeah. or another batch. Yeah, so this is PP right now. Yeah. We can heat it up, for example, for 230 degrees. Yeah. The maximum is 300 degrees. After that, the machine shuts itself off. It's a thermal also, safety. Yeah, yeah, so out of uh, safety reasons. After around seven minutes, the plastic is melted and we have the piston. Yeah, it basically gets, a plunger yeah, is pushing it in the mold. Yeah, basically a plunger yeah. pushing the melted plastic out of the nozzle. So the wheel pushes down the um, barrel, yeah. uh, the piston, <laughs> and um, 
you can push out the melted plastic. So we just heard the beep, so there yeah. was seven minutes. So, so it's right now it's ready to be extruded. Yeah, to use. Um, we're working with 230 degrees, mm -hmm. so heating glass. Yeah. <laughs> Safety first. We have a clamping system. It works in a way that we can change the height of the table. The barrel can um, hold up up to 120 grams of granulate. Yeah. So and the um, lowest table section is um, 33 centimeters. So for the bigger molds, you can go up to 33 centimeters. Yes. Yeah. And um, so we can check the plastic is melted. Yeah. And then we just clamp the mold underneath the nozzle and turn the wheel, which puts us down the piston. Yeah. After a while, we feel a stop and then it's just full. Yeah. So now I'm going to clamp it and you can turn the wheel. Okay. And now you have to the turn The only thing wheel. I have to do is just turn yeah, it around. Just turn, 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 turn. A little more pressure. And then you feel yeah, it Now it's stops. in that so stop. So keeping up the pressure a little bit. Yeah. This way the plastic doesn't fall in because it's cooled down. It's going to shrink a little bit. Yeah. That's enough. Then we just unclamp it. And so this part is now really hot. Yeah, so the uh, molds you don't have to preheat depending on the geometry of the product. If it's a like really large product, and we recommend preheating it once. But since the molds are all out of aluminum, they yeah. keep up the temperature, especially yeah. like after you, uh, since you always um, inject it with warm. Yeah. Um, plastic. We provide um, different kind of standard molds in our catalog and if you have your own product you can come to us. That's actually my job. I'm the yeah. uh, industrial and mold designer. So we design the product, we um, design and create the mold and manufacture it for you. So basically we're a one-stop shop so you get all the machines as well as the molds from as the molds. Us. So right in front of me is an example of one of these molds. Yes. And we can see there is an insert in there. Yeah, so this is our newest mold, especially for Formex. It is just an aluminum frame. So you just buy the frame from us and you can uh, manufacture and 3D print the inlay by yourself. So you can start prototyping with products you want to do or to manufacture. And after you have the final product, and you're satisfied with it, you can just come to us. We design and manufacture the aluminum mold for you and you can start manufacturing the product up to five or 10,000 times. And what kind of material you need to use to uh, be able to sustain the heat? So we recommend um, SLA printing with Richard and Kame. Since it's the most um, heat and pressure resistant. Yeah. You can also use FDMs. Um, but this one just, um, is, works for like five to ten times and with the SLA printed you can um, go up to a hundred times and then when you have the metal mold you can go up to like... This is some kind of a PPS? This is um, polycarbonate. Polycarbonate? Yes. Yeah. So it's still very affordable to print your own uh, inserts? Yes. So the usage you said uh, just a couple of uh, injections and then you will have to reprint the inserts. Yeah, so it can break after a while Yeah. because you have, um, depending on what kind of material um, you melt, it's up to like yeah. to 40 degrees and it's a lot of pressure. So with the injection machine we yeah. have about 75 bars, so the FDM can break after a while. Yeah. And this is the This is what we just, just uh, pushed made. in? Yes. All right, so we it's still a little bit, a little it's not warm. hot, but it is still a little bit, uh, probably it. also a little bit soft. Yeah. Can I bend it already? Yes, so we recommend to let it cool down in the open way. Yeah. So it has later on, it's just later on str stronger. Yeah. It's not safe for use for traveling, uh, for climbing. Yeah, so this is just for demonstration purpose only. But for example, for the keys or somewhere yeah. you can use yeah. it really well. Yeah, what I really like about this is that we have a nice color uh, gradient yeah. on this. That's the special part about the injection because we don't, the usual injection machines work with screws and the different kind of colors always gets mixed up. So you always get one color out of it. Yeah. The injection machine with the plunger, or yeah, as you said, plunger, <laughs> um, is in the way that you have the different colors stacked up and just just pushes it down. 
So you get this yeah. beautiful. So you can really play with the coloring yes. if it's more for a design uh, yeah, or for example, a showpiece. Yeah. This one is um, the Himalaya, is the highest um, recycling station in the world. There yeah. are our machines and they um, produce these um, kind of rocks for those tourists because yeah. the idea was the tourists go up, they bring their trash, leave it there and they take one stone. So after a while Himalaya is going to be gone because yeah. everyone took a stone. And these are now the stones. And this is, yeah, so this <laughs> is basically you can just um, make out of your own trash your own stone and souvenir. So I see a little bit of a team, you said it, it's for trash because right now it's a big problem. Yeah, everywhere. Europe is yeah. pretty okay, I think, but I think if we are looking further away, the trash is a real problem. So this is actually something that you are trying to provide to the people to do something about it. Yeah, so it's um, for plastic recycling. It's also really well for prototyping example. Yeah. We basically close the gap between 3D printing and the large industrial um, injection molding. Yeah, because injection molding is stupid expensive. Yeah, it's, you always have a huge amount to manufacture and if you are like a startup or something and you want to try first if the product you want to produce um, sells itself really well or you change the product many times, then you can just um, grab the machine manufacture it and about like 5,000 times, sell it yeah. and then change it again. Yeah, really cool. All right, so now we have seen the complete process from grinding up your trash to making something that is actual usable. Now, this is obviously going to come at quite an expense. What can you tell um, me about that? Yeah, so um, the injection machine starts with um, 5,890 euros. And we have a whole package for the, inje uh, the injection machine. It also has a fume extractor, which we recommend yeah. because the fumes are not toxic. But yeah, but if you're using stuff like ABS, it yeah. can irritate the throat. Yeah, and, yeah. definitely. So we have um, the injection machine with the fume extractor, the um, plastic scanner, yeah. and the desktop shredder together with two molds. All together is below 20,000. Two molds, what can we expect? Is something in this size? It's, um, yes, you can, we have different type of molds in our catalog. We have um, small smaller ones, ones like yeah. these, we have bigger ones. And then the oh. ones that you can make your own inserts. Yes. So basically what we are seeing now is what you're going to get yes. for that price. Yeah. So for example, um, our carabiner mold in this size is um, 400 euros and if you want to have your own product and it's a similar pro um, size like this one um, we can make a custom mold for you and this will be around like 700 to 1000 euros yeah. depending on the geometry and yeah. the actual size and yeah so for the whole kit what are we talking the about the whole kit um, all together is below 20,000. Okay. And if you want to just like start, especially for prototyping or something. Yeah, with for somebody our, like me that just yeah. want to inject stuff. Just and, injecting yeah. is our um, Explorer set. It is just the injection machine with a fume extractor and our two universal molds. Um, it's below 8,000. All right. So pretty well for a start. Yeah. All right, I'm going to thank you for your time. Thank I you wish too. you all the best luck. How yes. can people find you? Is this actually out now to buy? Yes, so we are so far for um, five years now, our company. We sold um, over 800 machines in over 95 countries. And soon we will also be available in the USA. Cool, thank you so much. Thank I wish you. you all the best luck on Thanks. your recycling venture. But before you go, there is also going to be a giveaway by the end of the year. We are going to give away resins, we are going to give away filaments, even this dryer box and some coupons from PCBWay. So if you are interested, follow the link down below and watch the live stream at the end of the year to see if you have won those prizes. It's going to be very casual with some beers or a bit of rum and turn on the notifications. Then I also want to thank Zhang He for inviting me and keep supporting the channel like they do. And also my wife for filming everything you have seen from from Formnext and obviously you guys and the members of the channel for your continued support so we can do crazy stuff like visiting Formnext. All right, that's going to be it. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next one.